Okay, so that's pretty an iconic sound, um, and uh, I'll leave it to you to figure out what I was trying to do there. But uh, Sir Paul made a lot of people happy with one of these. This is a current reissue replica of the bass he played uh, through most of the highlighted portions of his career. Uh, it's interesting to note that the reason he played it was because it was he could afford when he was starting out. These were fairly inexpensive, German-made. Uh, I still haven't figured out what these controls are. It says bass on. And when you put this down, it, the bass is on, but when you put the treble on, wait, I've actually turned them off. So it's, the switch is a little confusing. So you know all those songs, but he really wanted a Fender. But you couldn't afford Fenders in those days. They were American, they were expensive. So you played the Hofner, and doing so defined a tonality that is still current today. Uh, and now that he's in his, his advanced years, he's not old, but he's advancing, he's been quoted as saying he loves his Hofner because it's so light. You know, his Rickenbackers and his Fenders are quite a bit heavier. Uh, oh, I forget my manners. I'm Jack from Guitar Showcase in San Jose here on the Totally Guitars website talking to you. We're continuing our discussion of basses. Uh, as if you saw my other segment, you know that I, I, I'm very arrogantly in love with the Fender sound. Uh, I still think they're the most amazing basses on the planet. Uh, if you want to sound good playing bass, you should get one of these. But the Hofner has a sound like no other. So it wouldn't be bad to have one of these also. Uh. So, yeah. But it, it, they're very cool. They have a lot of interesting tonalities. Another bass that's fairly iconic. would be the Rickenbacker, which, for you Beatles fans, know that that's what Paul went to when he finally switched away from his Hoffner. But there's been other bands that have used uh, Rickenbackers, and to really do this right, I need to dig around in my pocket and find a guitar pick that I always carry, because I'm a true guitar player. I'm not one of like those wannabes that always comes into the store and goes, hey, you got a pick? And I'm thinking to myself, dude, they're a quarter. You should have four of them in your pocket at all times because otherwise you're just a wannabe. So, so the rhythm back came out and a lot of guys were pretty impressed with tonality. What model is this? This is a 4001 uh, C62, I think is what the technical name for it is. Oh no, it's a 4001 C64S. And it's a recreation of what they were doing in 64, uh, trying to capitalize again on Sir Paul's influence. They have the reverse headstock here to kind of do this. It's a satin finish. Um, that's actually pretty cool. Uh, it has the mutes here which nobody ever uses. Okay, so that's pretty bad. Chris Squire does a lot better, but Yes was the other band that really did this. Uh, yet another band that was uh, capitalized on the Rick and Backer sound for a lot of years was Rush. Uh, and I missed them entirely because I was raising kids at the time, so I didn't pay too much attention to the radio. But they did a lot of stuff with Rickenbacker still. Like, Wait, no, Getty went back to a jazz bass. <laughs> Sorry. But it has. It is known for that bright articulation.
good bottom end. So, very narrow but articulate neck, so it's very quick. So if you wanted to play guitar an octave down, you could do that. Some people would like that. It's not my thing. Uh, I was hoping to show you one of the Gibson EB lines uh, because they were very popular in the 60s, uh, particularly with the British groups, again, because the Fenders were expensive, but they could get the Gibsons. Uh, all we have at the moment is this lonely uh, th Thunderbird. And this is uh, complete with the pick up pick guide protector coming off. Um, this one still captures a lot of that EB sound without being completely muddy. Uh, when we talk about definitive bass lines of the 60s, uh, Chaz Chandler with the Animals had his share. And it was an EB2 that he was playing. And they're an interesting bass, but they were short scale, and the, the EB short scales had a tendency to get really floppy in the low E. Uh, and they had these really hot, loud pickups. Uh, probably the most famous guy playing an EB3 would be Jack Bruce with Cream. And it just, you know, his tone was just basically. But it, it, it worked well enough to support what Eric and Ginger were trying to do, so, you know, I guess it worked. Uh, Thunderbird came out as a companion to the Firebird, and they went nowhere pretty fast, but they're actually pretty cool. Uh, quite a few famous bass players, well, John Entwistle again. Or some stuff. Um, it's been a while since I've played my generation on guitar. Uh, Thunderbird's a pretty cool bass. Fairly... Um, Narrow slot in terms of its tonal spectrum, but for what it does, it's, it's pretty cool. If you need something that has a pretty broad, flat, fat tone, since you're doing a power trio thing, it might be something to consider. Um, well, that's it for today. We'll just talk about other bases on, you know, as they come up in our travels. This is Jack at Guitar Showcase for Totally Guitars. Thanks for paying attention.